A very good day to you. This is Change Radio News. Today is Friday the 8th of November 2024. The news read by Olive Ruzizo. And here are the news headlines. New president of Botswana has been inaugurated. President Chamisa says he hopes Mr. Mnangagwa will learn from Botswana. High Court overturns Artu's President Masaraore's conviction and three days left for Senator Timba and Averdale's 63 judgment. And now for the news in detail. Today, the newly elected President of Botswana, His Excellency Duma Gideon Boko, was inaugurated as President. The ceremony was attended by several dignitaries, including President Nelson Chamisa, Julius Malema, amongst others. Speaking at the ceremony, President Boko said that African leaders must remain united and embrace peace. Speaking at the ceremony, President Nelson Chamisa praised the people of Botswana for showing unity and voting for change. He also said that he hopes Mr. Mnangagwa will learn from what President Masisi did. Let's hear President Chamisa speak. I'm here representing the people of Zimbabwe, their aspirations, their hopes for democracy, their hopes for freedom. But what you have to realize is that uh, Botswana is a signal. Botswana has done a significant thing for the continent, uh, for a new Africa, but also for the region in terms of heralding uh, an era of newness, an era of transformation, an era of effective uh, transition. You look at it. Uh, the BGP was in power for almost 58 years. This is a smooth transition from one political party to another. It's a critical thing. We have seen ZANU PF in Zimbabwe. We have defeated them in elections twice. But they have refused to go. So we hope that Mr. Mnangagwa, who is here and is just two rows away from me, mm-hmm. will learn one or two lessons yeah. about life after politics, life after leadership, life after public office. So that's why it is both critical and significant. And God has blessed Africa, and God has blessed Botswana, and we are happy we are here to celebrate. Yeah. We are one people. We are one nation. We are one family. And democracy is about taking turns. It's your turn today, it's another turn tomorrow. We must not be vindictive. We must not be pursuing each other. Even former presidents must be honored and respected. We don't want a situation whereby former presidents are pursued in a cat and mouse relationship. Let's give them honor, respect. Of course they made mistakes, omissions and commissions, but let there be honor, because that's what keeps us as a family. We are one village, and President Boko emphasized that point, that we must remain understanding that, you know, hands wash each other. We are one people. Love is everywhere in the world, and we must embrace it. Love is in the air in Botswana, and the Botswana people have shown the love. And he has said there must be building of bridges. He has reached out to say, let's embrace uh, President Masisi. Let's embrace the past. Acknowledge it, but move on to correct it. And I think that's a critical message. It's a statement's message. President Boko is a leader par excellence. The statesman is a leader of a new Africa, of a new SADC, and he signals a new order. And we are proud of him. Yesterday, the High Court overturned the conviction of Obit Masaraure, the president of Amalgamated Rural Teachers Union of Zimbabwe, Artus. Masaraure faced charges of obstruction of justice after posting on social media a solidarity message with fellow activist Robson Cherry. Masaraure celebrating this victory revealed that he now has no pending court cases. Meanwhile, yesterday, speaking on Mozambique protests, he said that it is important for people of Zimbabwe to stand in solidarity with the people of Mozambique. Let's hear him speak. Enough. What we need to do is to uh, act on the issues that uh, we have uh, sort of agreed uh, or proposed and agreed or proposed in this uh, discussion. Um, we, we, we just have to stand uh, with the people of Mozambique. If we don't, we know from the past that they will get weary and uh, uh, things will get uh, back to the abnormal status quo, which is uh, 
are not supposed to happen. So we did our our commitment. Is it uh, the we commitment that we we may not um, we are definitely not uh, trusting that Sadat will handle this matter well. But the fact that we are in Zimbabwe and the Sadat chairmanship in Zimbabwe uh, pushes us and should push us to act more and to speak more. So that's a pledge that we we take uh, and we put forward today. But again, we um, we emphasize uh, regional solidarity. We need to coordinate. We need uh, to knock on the doors of other opposition parties in different uh, parts of the region and continent. We need to speak to civil society all over. We need to also and many other groups like faith-based organizations, trade unions. We need everyone on board for us to make a real push. But we commit, and we continue to encourage our brothers and sisters who are on the front line. Thank you. In human rights-related news. It has been 146 days since the illegal arrest of Senator Jameson Timber and the remaining members of the Avondale 78. Only three days are left for them to appear in court on November 11 for their judgment. Citizens are calling for the protection of constitutional rights following their prolonged persecution by Zanapiev's regime. Meanwhile, it has been 42 days since Honorable Chibaya was arrested on false charges of inciting violence. He has been remanded to 15 November. Promise Munkuli was acquitted by the Wange Magistrate Court on Tuesday as the state lacked evidence in order to convict him for allegedly inciting an uprising against Mnangagwa taking over Sadak reigns. Following our 6th November 2024 story on an attempt by Victoria Falls Ward 1 ZANU-PF candidate to block Mbumez Wabantu to recontest on the 30th of November by elections, Change Radio's Kokelani Nkame spoke to the fraudulently recalled councillor Efias Mambume, a.k.a. Mbumez Wabantu, to give an update on yesterday's court outcome. Let's hear more from him. Just for a quick update uh, on the case that uh, my competitor, the ZANU PF candidate for the by election in Ward 1 of Victoria Falls, um, as you know, he made an appeal to the electoral court uh, to get me uh, disqualified. Um, uh, on the basis of uh, manufactured uh, figures that were actually uh, presented and filed in court, uh, which um, vainly uh, attempting to paint me as someone who owes the local authority uh, a lot of money for a long time. Uh, I'm happy to announce that the case is, uh, has been concluded. The case was uh, set down for hearing uh, yesterday, the 7th of November, uh, 2024. And it didn't take uh, the court time to make a decision. Uh, and the decision is in my favor. The decision was that um, this desperate gentleman's appeal is without merit. He actually used uh, the wrong law. Uh, and he made an appeal in terms of the rule that is uh, designed for people that would have been denied the right to file their papers at the nomination court. So it didn't take the court much time to really see that this is just a demonstration and manifestation of uh, desperation. Um, but the not so good news is that um, uh, my ZANU-PF candidate, or my ZANU-PF competitor, not my candidate, uh, is unrelenting. Uh, he really is serious about his hunting expedition, uh, trying to hunt and fish for a position through the courts. This time around, he has again registered a case. This time he has used a, a ZANU-PF uh, supporter called Akim 
to file an agent application at the high court again against me, uh, praying that I should be expunged from the ballot paper. And Let us get more from our reporter. The drama unfolds as the ZANPF candidate Tadesi seeks to secure Victoria Falls Ward 1 seat via a back door. After his initial attempt to bar the recalled councillor, Efias Mambume from recontesting on the 30th November by election was spotted by the electoral court. He has now employed another tactic. Enter Akim, who has filed another application at the High Court seeking to prevent the democratic route. This move comes hot on the heels of the Court's earlier decision, a ruling that was seen as victory for the residents, right to choose a representative of their choice. Akin's new court filing, honestly on behalf of the Zanin PF candidate, raises concerns about the threats on democratic process, the development highlights the ongoing struggles of citizens, candidates who are pro chamisa versus than PF. Reporting for Change Radio in Victoria Falls, this is Machahan Kanandava. During a parliamentary debate on Wednesday, legislators criticized government disorganization as the main barrier to efficient resource use. They emphasized that Zimbabwe's vast coal reserves could drive economic growth and reduce electricity costs if properly harnessed. The legislators advocated leveraging coal energy to enhance investor appeal and bolster the mining and agriculture sectors. The Mashingo Provincial Women Task Force recently convened in Mashingo Urban to express strong support for President Nelson Chamisa. The meeting was led by coordinator Sekwizai Maivembo Shayamanu. Change radios where Jiramunya gives us more. The Masingo Provincial Women Leadership met in Masingo Eben. They were led by Masingo Provincial Task Force Coordinator Sekwizai Maivembo Shayamanu. Speaking to Change Radio, immediately after the meeting, Mrs. Shayamanu said, we met today at the Masingo Provincial Task Force team to strategize how to mobilize women and youth to vote for President Nelson Chamisa. She further said President Nelson Chamisa is the best foot forward to win elections as is popular and also have a social contract with citizens across Zimbabwe. At this meeting, it was also attended by Mashingo Provincial Task Force Team Organizer Gertrude Doba, Secretary General Rutendo Kuya, Information and Publicity Tendai Magomana, also the cluster coordinators also attended this meeting include Musleni Chukuriri from Mashingo Cluster, Leticia Mufane Baza from Pikita, Muchanita Munderi from Gutu, along also with the constituency coordinators Enita Choto and Susan Mawari from Gutu and Pikita, respectively. Also, Chirezi and Menezi were also represented. The Secretary General for Mashingo Women Assembly, Coordinator Rutende Kuya said, Mashingo is where President Nelson Chamisa comes from. Therefore, we must mobilize women, men, youth to vote for President Nelson Chamisa and to support him. Reporting for Change Radio here in Mashingo, Wejira Citizens are criticizing the city of Harare and the government of Zimbabwe for their recent crackdown on illegal settlements, which began yesterday. During this operation, authorities demolished dozens of houses in Ridgeview, Belvedere. Critics argue that instead of taking such drastic measures, the government should focus on finding sustainable solutions on the ongoing housing crisis 
rather than increasing insecurities on home seekers. Gender advocates are urging budget consultants to prioritize a gender-responsive budget in 2025 that focuses on essential care infrastructure and services, specifically targeting rural areas. Our reporter gives us more. Key issues include advocating for investments in solarized piped water systems, daycare centers, preschools in rural areas, clinics, and improved road networks, all aimed at reducing the burden of care that disproportionately affects women and girls. As members of Parliament gather for a pre-budget seminar in Bulawayo from November 5 to the 10th, 2024, under the same theme, Building Resilience for Sustainable Economic Transformation, these advocates are urging, are urging budget consultants to incorporate these essential services into their planning to support gender equity and enhance community resilience. Reporting for Change Radio in Victoria Falls, this is Machaham Kamandaba. A road accident in Motare occurred in the morning involving a school combi carrying 19 students from Nyanganya High School resulting in one death and 15 injuries. The vehicle overturned on the Motare Judiasdale Road. The injured were taken to local hospitals and the deceased student's body is at Bonda Mission Hospital for examination. In international news, Mauritius government banned access to social media ahead of the November 10 parliamentary elections with Prime Minister Bravind Jugnaut seeking re-election. The social media blackout lasting until November 11 follows a wiretapping scandal involving leaked conversations of politicians and journalists. The government cites national security concerns and has instructed internet service providers to block access to all social media platforms during this period. In Mozambique, protests continue with the opposition parties united against the ruling party, Frelimo. The Frelimo is being accused of rigging the 9th October elections. Speaking on social media yesterday, a human rights watch group, Southern Defenders, said that they have no hope in Sadak resolving their issue as its chairman, Mr. Mnangagwa, is involved in the planning of the election rigging. In sports news, the Zimbabwe Football Association has confirmed the details for the Warriors' preparations for their penultimate fixture in the 2025 AFCON qualifiers Group J against Kenya. The national team will host Harambe Stars in South Africa due to the unavailability of approved stadiums in Zimbabwe. The game will be played at Peter Mokaba Stadium in Polokwane on Friday, 15 November. Kickoff is at 6 p.m. Central African time. According to Zifa, the 23 players selected for the game will start the camp in Polokwane on Sunday, 10 November. All selected players based outside South Africa will fly straight to Polokwane and link up with a locally based group. Simba Bora head coach Tondira Indiraya expressed his excitement after winning the 2024 Castle Lager Premier Soccer League title. Ndiraya guided Simba Bora to their maiden league glory and his first in his managerial career after beating relegated side Arenal 1-0 on Wednesday. The Shamba-based side won the championship with two games to spare, having attained an unsaleable 66 points. To end the news, here are the headlines once again. The new president of Botswana has been inaugurated. President Chamisa says he hopes Mr. Mnangagwa will learn from Botswana. The High Court overturns Artu's President Masarore's conviction and three days left for Senator Timba and Avondale 63 judgment. This concludes our news bulletin. Thank you for listening. From myself, Olive, 
and the entire team at Change Radio. Have a blessed weekend.